fun thing for me about making this movie is designing the different creatures that populate this crazy underwater world. There's a wide range of creatures inhabiting the underwater world. Some of the creatures are familiar and some are very new. It's an unexplored world. The world of Atlantis has all sorts of unknown life that we've never seen before, and it comes springing from the imagination of James Wan and all the great artists that worked on the project. Aquaman riding a seahorse is one of the most absurd images from the comics. And one of the challenges going into this was how do you get past the sort of joke of Aquaman riding the seahorse? What James wanted to do was embrace it. Let's not pretend that these aren't the iconic images of Aquaman. Let's make them cool and make them awesome. Going into it, I wanted different animals to differentiate the two separate kingdoms. With the Zebelians, they have taken to seahorses. And the king rides in on a beautiful, majestic sea dragon. They do feel like ancient knights, but with a sort of fantasy science fiction twist to it. Meanwhile, the Atlanteans have domesticated and tamed all the really dangerous sharks. Willem gets to ride this giant black hammerhead shark with some really spectacular armor on it. It was very important that the animals would in some way have personalities that tied in with the characters that would write them. And that's definitely the reason why King Ark's animal is an ancient Tylosaur. I think mean, he gets the coolest one. He's riding this armored Tylosaur that just looks so badass. We have seven kingdoms of the underwater world. And one of the kingdoms is known as the Fisherman Kingdom. These are more like mer people. They're peaceful, docile people. The fishermen people are more intellectuals, scholars, and artists. They are ones that want to make peace with the surface dwellers. The initial design work had started, I think, early on with James and a couple illustrators. But way down the line, you know, even into filming, we were still redesigning those characters. They need to be more grounded and give them a bit more humanity, so we went and redesigned them and kind of created class systems as well. Like you see the soldiers are very fish-like, where you look at the royal kingdom and they're very evolved and more human. The fishermen people are basically a combination of practical makeup effects and a lot of visual effects on meditation. We did full body suits from the waist up with silicone hand appliances and full silicone face, pieces, cowls, contact lenses, and teeth. The only part that we may have in visual effects is a little bit of gill movement, but overall it's a full prosthetic makeup. Prepare your armor, you royal highness. We move against the Brian King at once. Brian Kingdom are literally the bottom feeders of Atlantis. They are the most maligned and looked down upon of the other society. They were humans, they turned into crabs. So they're kind of like what we want for dinner. And they got multiple legs and they're kind of brutish and they live low on the ground in caves. The Brian people, they don't swim, they walk. And these creatures are big, heavier people with massive armor. And so we started with that idea of designing what the king would look like. There's quite a bit of inspiration that came from really early deep sea diver suits. But he's not wearing a suit, that's his natural form. The ocean is a magical place, but it's also terrifying as well. And so I wanted this movie to be able to reflect our feelings of the great and powerful ocean. <laughs> I love the ocean. It's something that absolutely scares me and draws me in. It's super spooky. If you've been in the middle of the ocean where you just look down, it's pretty terrifying because it's all the unknown, right? You never know what's down there. The 
for Trench Kingdom, I had a great stunning off point because they're featured very prominently in Jeff Jones's um, New 52. And so I used that to dive into the world of the Trench Kingdom. These scary, trench-dwelling, cannibalistic creatures. But through that idea, I started to develop something that's a bit different. In the comic book, they have big, giant eyes. But I start to realize that these characters probably would not have eyes. Because when you're so far down, you know, the sun doesn't penetrate that far and there's no light. If anything, they're afraid of bright lights. And so then that started informing what the creatures would really look like. The trench creatures really allow me to lean into the horror aspect of the ocean. The trench are a super dangerous group, and James has an incredible sequence. It harkens back to his pure horror days. It's a creature from the Black Lagoon, but the 2018 version. Down here we have a legend about the Karatha. An ancient sea monster so powerful that even King Abner himself knew it. And now the beast has awakened. This creature is nearly as old as time itself. First and foremost, it's ginormous. In real world scale, from tip of the nose to the end of its longest tentacle, it's two miles long. We needed to design a creature that is big enough to take on Orem's entire army. There's some aspects to it that are crab or lobster-like. It also is part giant squid. I pulled from design aesthetic from the ocean, infusing it with my love for HP Lovecraft to create the most powerful creature on Earth.